For the third straight year, Ohio State is your outright Big Ten champion as Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade joins us. And Kyle, I think this game in December might have been the game we were expecting between Ohio State and Wisconsin back in October. Yeah, uh, finally, Ohio State pushed to the absolute brink, uh, pushed to the limit. It felt like they were going to lose, I thought, for, for a lot of the game. Um, was it was an outstanding performance, I thought. I, I think they showed more being tested in this game how good they are than, you know, blowing teams out throughout the season. I mean, they, it takes a lot to come, come from behind, uh, especially, you know, 14 points against a good team. Nothing was going right, playing bad on offense and defense. Uh, and then, obviously, they made halftime adjustments. They had some huge momentum swinging plays, uh, and they never gave it back in the second half, 27-0. I think one of those big halftime adjustments was just the fact that Jeffrey Akuda was cleared to play, and we saw what a difference Akuda makes in the secondary. Yeah, I mean, the Ohio State secondary is, you know, one of the best in the country and in the playoff that's going to be needed, whether they play LSU, Oklahoma, or uh, Clemson. Um, made a gigantic difference in the second half. I mean, Wisconsin's offense had very little yards, very little traction in the second half. Jonathan Taylor was another guy who – had a huge first half and had 13 yards after halftime. Uh, so there were just, you know, massive changes. And I think that's kind of, I don't know, the heart of a champion, whatever you want to say. I mean, when, you know, they had to dig down, they did it. And I mean, that was a resounding performance in the second half. The other big difference we saw in the second half offensively was Ohio State's offensive line. After really being beat up in the first half, Justin Field, I think, was sacked five times tonight. But that offensive line kind of came together in that second half. They were able to protect Fields a little bit better, open up those hills, those holes for J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I mean, the first half, Fields was very out of sorts. I mean, you could tell he wasn't 100%. He said after the game he was about 85 or 90%. But, I mean, he's holding on to the ball a long time. I mean, some of those sacks were because of the line. Some of them I thought were because of him. Uh, but, I mean, like you say, in the second half, he just looked like a completely different player. I mean, I don't know if he got like a shot of adrenaline or what, but, I mean, he looked different out there, didn't really make that many mistakes. Um, and then Dobbins, like you said. I mean, it looked like the, the first time they played Wisconsin. I mean, just the holes they opened, they did it last week against Michigan. I mean, the, the offensive line is just totally dominant. And I think that's going to be one of the keys in the playoff going forward because, I mean, if you win the line of scrimmage, then the chances of winning the game are, you know, astronomical. 18th time J.K. Dobbins has rushed over 100 yards in a game. Ohio State, not shockingly, is 18-0 and when Dobbins goes over 100 yards. He had the big game. And then another big game from K.J. Hill, who, who came into this game with a couple of records in sight. He needed just four passes, receiving passes, to pass David Boston as Ohio State's all-time leading receiver. He did that, and he had some big catches, two touchdown catches for K.J. Yeah, that Dobbins stat, I didn't know. That's a really good one. Um, Hill, you, you could have made a case for him to be the game's MVP, I thought. Um, I mean, those two touchdowns were crucial to, to keep the pressure on Wisconsin and kind of put the game out of reach once they got up double digits. He's had a, an interesting career. He's never been like a flashy superstar guy or whatever. He actually hasn't started a lot of games in his career, but still just catches a million passes a game, it seems like, and enough to, to be the all-time leading receiver for a really, you know, big-time program. I know Ohio State hasn't passed the ball historically until about the last 20 years, but um, very impressive kind of underrated career for K.J. Hill. And K.J. Hill is one game with a catch away from tying Gary Williams for the all-time Ohio State record for consecutive games with a catch. Ohio State theoretically could play two more games. Now, at this point, there's a pretty clear-cut top four. Ohio State, LSU, Clemson, Oklahoma. The big question over the next 11 hours or so is going to be the order of those four teams. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Clemson is for sure third. Oklahoma is for sure fourth. It's those top two. I mean, it's tough to say. I think LSU probably will be number one. If I knew how close it was between the schools, I think I could tell you right now. I mean, there's 12 committee members. If 10 of them had Ohio State number one last week, then I feel like they would be number one again this week. Um, they have more top 25 wins. Uh, they have just some total blowouts over highly ranked good teams. Their non-conference schedule is a huge differentiator. All three of them went to conference title games. Cincinnati is going to be in the top 25, I would assume, still. Um, so you can make the argument for each. I think we're huge victims of, of now, mm -hmm. and LSU beat the number four team 37-10. to 10. So that could be the tiebreaker.
we'll find out how much the college football playoff committee stayed up. Theoretically, they watched the entire game, but if they went to bed at halftime, <laughs> they might have seen a different Ohio State team than what we saw in the third quarter out of this Buckeye team. Yeah, I mean, just uh, a tour de force. I mean, 17 nothing. The, the yardage was just huge difference. You had the punt right over here that was dropped, which I thought was kind of the play of the game. Uh, just an unbelievable performance when Ohio State had to have it. Buckeyes wrap up a perfect regular season. We'll find out a little bit after noon on Sunday where they will go for a bowl game, whether it will be Atlanta in the Peach Bowl or out to Arizona for another trip to the Fiesta Bowl, as it looks pretty darn good that the Buckeyes will be in the top two in the college football playoff. I want to thank Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade for joining us for the special edition of College Football Weekly from the Big Ten Championship game.